Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to The Engineer. And today I found a very cool level that will allow us, yes that was slot 3 by the way, that will allow us to test some real life principles because it's this level, the seismic test. This should be interesting. Now basically this simulates an earthquake because when the level starts basically this platform like rocks all about the place and the aim of this level is to try and support this up here. So you've got to build quite a tall tower and you've got to try and make it earthquake proof. Now unfortunately we don't have logs which are the strongest building material on this. We do have beams though as well as bracing and sheets and nails Oh, and a few blocks. Now, there's also some other stuff that may be, may be useful later on. But for now, let's just build like a basic structure. So if we grab this beam, we can rotate it that way so it's flush with the ground. Although actually, maybe it shouldn't be flush with the ground. It should probably be flush with the, with the roof. But yeah, that's fine. We can then say, whoop, extend you that way. And we're going to be trying out a load of different designs. So for now, we'll just start simple. We're literally just going to go four corners. We'll go up. Then we'll do these on top like that. And then we'll just go up again. And oh, this this level might be like it might be like a civil engineering, a structural engineering lesson. Why we build structures and not just stilts. Right, okay, so we're sort of up to the right level. So now we want to shrink this to that height. And in order to hold the roof on, I think if we do this out of each side, then right, I think that's sort of secure. I mean, I should probably I should probably like do some some diagonals so it doesn't fall through but yeah okay so that <laughs> i made i made a giant table so if we come up here to build we can we can watch it get built so that just does all that stuff and then physics will apply so gravity will take effect and then you can oh my goodness you can see exactly how how the base simulates an earthquake because it goes <laughs> It goes a little bit mental. Now, first off, these legs, they're probably not even strong enough to work, even if the ground wasn't shaking. Uh, so let's come down here to bracing and let's truss this thing up. Now, as us engineers know, the triangle is the second strongest shape. So basically, you just want to try and turn this side into as many triangles as you can. So for example, if we go like from down there over to there, then across that way and then back up again. You can see rather than rather than a giant rectangle, we've made like loads of little triangles. Now, this in the real life is the equivalent of putting braces on a building. If you look at big skyscrapers, you'll probably see like on the outside, they have like these huge sort of exoskeletons, like huge steel beams that support the outside of the building. Architects hate them because they provide structural support. And we know that architects don't care about that sort of stuff. But rather than your building just being floors and pillars, which, as we saw earlier, aren't very strong. We add loads of triangles by using braces and therefore make a much stronger building. So I've done that for both sides. I probably should do the other side, but if I if I remember correctly, this, this only like vibrates, like it only shifts left and right. So this might be a bit better. Let's just see before I add the the other directions. Is it better? Oh yeah, it is, it is a lot better. It, it's still not great. But I think if I just come around and add our bracing down this side and the back side, <laughs> back side, which is going to be easier said than done because these these planks, they don't stretch too far. And I think I didn't do a perfect square. I did more of a rectangle. So if you look like we can't reach like very, very far, I'd rather do like 45 degrees if I'm honest. But instead, we're stuck doing like <laughs> the shallowest little triangles ever. Still, as my granddad used to tell me, shallow triangles are better than no triangles. So he, he never said that, but it's probably true. So let's just continue doing this all the way up. And if you're new to my channel, you're probably wondering two things right now. One, why why are triangles the second strongest shape? Like why why does why does doing this make this stronger than what it was? Well, think about the force. Which energy surrounds us? Now the force is determined by the, by the weight up here, like the gravity acting on this that pushes down onto our platform. And if you think before, before we had all these cross braces, that force just went straight down these. And because they're so long, they're gonna probably flex, they're gonna break. And how I like to think about force in structures is like how many how many pieces are there and how can the force get through them? Because basically force travels from one end of like of a piece like this, this leg it travels from up here straight down to the bottom. So therefore this, this leg, it's taking like a quarter of the entire weight. 
So therefore, it needs to be pretty strong. Whereas, now we've added triangles in, if you think about the force coming down, some of it will go straight down, but some of it will come down this diagonal beam. And then when the force gets to there, it will get split. Some of it will go down, some of it will go down that beam, some of it may go across that beam. And so basically, having all these, all these different all these different elements, it sort of spreads your force out, meaning the weight that had to go through a single beam last time is now going through lots of other ones, which means each little beam is taking far less weight individually, and therefore it can be smaller. And in this case, you can't actually change like how strong each beam is, uh, but this should be much stronger, at least if there wasn't an earthquake at the bottom. Uh, the only thing you've got to you've got to be wary of is down the bottom. Like if we look up now, there's now the weight of all these beams we've added. Remember that wasn't there before. It was literally just like a straight piece. Those straight pieces, they're still there, but we've added all of this extra wood. So generally in like in like skyscrapers and stuff, if you were to ever look at like the, the steel pieces, you'll probably notice the very like top, you got like quite thin bits of steel. And as you get lower, lower down, particularly like the straight columns, you know, the ones on like the ground floor will be super thick, super strong. That's because they're taking the weight of everything else above it. That's enough going on. Let's see how our braces work. So build structure really fast. Oh, that's actually quite satisfying to speed that up. Nice. Okay, now, how is it working? Oh, it's sort of holding, but not really. <laughs> Earthquakes. They're pretty destructive. So the external bracing didn't work that well. I mean, to be honest, I probably should have. If you look in real life, most buildings are sort of cross braced like that. So it creates a cross in the middle. I could try adding that. I don't think it's gonna do enough. But if we don't try, we will never know. And I want to make sure that I've definitely tried everything I could to get this cross bracing to work. And if you're wondering, well, why is cross bracing better than what you did before? Remember what I said about splitting the forces each way? Well, think about now as the force comes down. Now there's cross braces. There's even more directions the force can go. So each piece, each member is getting, it's getting way less force actually traveling through it. All right, okay, that's now fully cross braced. Let's... <laughs> I'm intrigued to see whether, like, just keep adding braces, whether it will actually work. Yeah, right, let's build that up, and then let's see how the earthquake affects everything. Oh, look, it's better. It's definitely better. And the other thing I might do, I didn't really do this roof very well. Like, it can easily slip off. So I might just reinforce it with beams. So if I just angle that round like that, extend as far as it will go go then i can use nails just to attach this All right okay so top is much better now and you can see <laughs> you can see down the bottom it just sort of comes apart from itself so another thing engineers do to try and like make buildings a bit more earthquake proof uh, they literally go mental on like all these joints they like, you can just make them like literally just nail them to help i mean not nails you'd probably use like bolts in a building so yeah i could go around and make everything a bit more secure but that's not really that's not really interesting so i'll go on to the next technique we use sheer walls now you may have noticed if you've ever if you've ever seen like a skyscraper being built there's usually like a concrete block going up through the middle. Uh, generally that's like the lift core so like where the lifts are but the main reason it's there and like in concrete is because it provides a lot of strength to a structure. Now unfortunately in this I've only got like 40 blocks so I don't think that will get me very high but uh, we'll try adding them through the middle. So we've got that we can then do a layer of mortar that will just stick it together then we can do another block on top a layer of mortar another block on top of that a layer of mortar etc etc until we get to the very top. But there is our lift core in we can now <laughs> we can now just brace to this and for that, I probably want to cover this in like little small beams like this, just so we got like attachment points. But if we do like that, a bit of that, then we'll go down a few floors, add more of these beams on, brace it all up. Then the idea is the building is being made way more rigid because we got this central column that's super stiff. So let's see, how does that work in an earthquake? I mean, it's better. You cannot say it's not better, <laughs> But it's not great. Now, it probably would have been better if I could have, like, got more more blocks in there. And rather than having just, like, a single tower, having, like, actual, like, block work. Still, it gives you an idea of how most modern buildings work. They have a central lift core. They have the cross bracing. The thing is, most modern buildings, they're not really designed for earthquakes. And hence, this comes crumbling down almost every time. 
However, if we restart structure, there's two methods that are increasingly common for trying to make your building earthquake proof. The first is what we call seismic base isolation. It's basically making your building not touch the floor like not being attached to it. So basically putting it on like ball bearings or something, something that allows movement so that the base can move and the building will just stay there. So we're going to try and simulate that with wheels because we don't have ball bearings in this game. And because we know this shakes left to right, if we just rotate our wheels like that. So if we have wheels at the base of our building and then we try and just build as best we can. So I've just stuck beams to each of them. I think if I just nail like through all of these and then just nail all of these in as well. And then I think they're they're pretty, pretty well connected. At least that direction. I obviously need to do this direction as well. So attach one that side, one to this one. Because remember, these are fixed at either end. So from this point, I can then build my structure. So we'll go warp, make that longer. If only that worked in real life. All right, so then we've got the, the outer frame. If we just add that cross bracing again. So we end up with that. Let's see if we just quickly build that. Boosh. That is some fast engineering. Right, how does this work? Oh, oh, it nearly worked. <laughs> it nearly worked. So you can see at the base, as, as this is moving, the wheels are like allowing the building to almost stay perfectly still. In fact, I'm wondering if, if these were just a bit more secure. I feel like it was breaking like down here. Like, oh yeah, that's working better. I've just toughened those up a bit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so this corner break. Let's just make this, let's just make this corner a bit rigid. I think it's because this, can you see this beam? I didn't line it up very well. Bloody contractors that is. On the drawing, perfectly lined up. But whoever built it got lazy. Now, I haven't got lazy. I've added loads and <laughs> loads of nails. And I think, oh no, look, that wheel's coming off now. Again, that gap, probably not to tolerance. So let's just add a few more nails in. But yeah, aside from the wheels coming off, the actual structure, because because the base is like barely moving, and because I've used completely efficient engineering, oh, that wheel came off. You can hopefully see if this were in real life and we use like ball bearings or like joints that allow sort of movement. Actually really strong. Oh no, it's, it's heading for the stairs. So <laughs> that's the downside. <laughs> That is the downside. No. Thankfully, there is one more solution to this problem. But yeah, if we restart our structure again, the final solution, and this is probably the, the more popular method that I've seen in like the real world. Like think about the tallest buildings in the world. If you ever look at like videos of how they're actually made, you'll probably notice they all have something similar. And that is a seismic dampener. Basically a giant counterweight, like a pendulum up the very top. Uh, sometimes it's like a big like metal ball. Sometimes it's just like a big like bucket of water almost. But basically it allows your structure to be very, very weak because the, the weight up the top completely counters like the, the movement. So if we go for that sort of thing again, put the diagonal in up the top, just nail it all together so it's strong. All right, and then basically if we if we just dangle a giant weight from the top, we've got some ropes, we've got blocks. I will just put a brace in just so I can get the block in the right place. But basically put a large-ish block in and then shove it right in the center like that then delete that and then we can just use ropes to attach this attach like that and then basically this block as long as everything else is sort of strong enough should counter the the movement so if we press build and watch this get built quickly you can see this shouldn't work right we've added more weight to the table than we had initially but look the weight up the top is keeping everything perfectly perfectly in place and then the rest of the building is actually allowed to flex now, that's sort of the key thing we've learned in engineering. Movement is good. You shouldn't try and force things to be rigid because they will just, well, they will just break over time. If you can, if you can incorporate that movement into your designs, you can make your designs far cheaper and far safer. Like, look at this thing. It's, <laughs> it's just working. Like, if I come down, if I grab the engineer, can I even stand on this platform without falling over? No, I'm acting in the same way. I've got a massive weight on my head in form of that haircut. And it's just allowing me to not fall over. All right, let's see. Can I climb up and get on this platform? Come on, engineer. You probably didn't know that. Trait of an engineer. Great climbers. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've broken it. I've broken it. Oh, no. Ah!
Anyway, hopefully you learned something today. If you do, boost your like button. But for now, I'll say peace, love, and seismic dampers. Bye, guys.